Michael, Michael, even though he hasn't been able to uh, talk with people, you know, using his voice, <coughs> he's able to, to communicate uh, through text, through emails, and he watches the same TV shows, he thinks that the same things are funny, and he's able to really just put himself out there, and that's just, it's amazing though, to see how somebody who, you know, people say that he's, had, that he's disabled, but he's not disabled at all. During practice, you would just be in a scrimmage situation, and they all got to know me pretty fast, and they know that I depend on my sight. I'm a very visual person, so it really felt like connecting with them right away. I picked up a few signs here and there, but it was, you know, he was more of a teammate then, and then it started to roast. I knew that he didn't really have anybody around other than the interpreter. And whenever they weren't around, you know, you kind of feel bad because he's not participating in everything that we're talking about. Yeah, I think it's very unique. I mean, my other friends, not, you know, regardless of whether they're deaf or hearing, I have a unique friendship with them as well, but with Billy in particular, he's a very willing guy and he's always willing to do anything for me, such as interpret and need be. So just really with his attitude towards helping me with everything. You know, I'm really appreciative of that. He's an inspiration to a lot of young kids and he understands basketball. Uh, he understands when everyone else, you know, is stopped and looking in one direction that he just stops playing uh, because, you know, he knows that something is happening. But when we're in the huddle, that's when I need to really communicate. I just want people to know that, that people can do it. I know that people that people who can rise and play at the level of hearing